Hi there, I'm Jamie Dunbar, and welcome back to the Dunbar Dog Diaries, The Puppy Next Door. This is week six, video one, and this is the first time I've worked with Daisy in over two weeks. We had to take a bit of a break as I went on vacation, and we had the windows in our training studio and office replaced. That said, her owners have been working with her over the past couple of weeks, it's just that I haven't been working with her myself. In our last training session, I introduced Daisy to a friend of mine she had never met before. In this video, I'm going to do some basic obedience exercises just to see what her skills are like after a little break in working together. However, before we jump into the video, I just wanted to say that if you are enjoying this series and want to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure to check out our self-guided dog training courses at DunbarAcademy.com. We have hundreds of hours of dog training videos, lectures, and seminars, as well as worksheets and ebooks, all of which can be purchased individually, or you can get access to all of it as part of our $20 Top Dog Academy subscription. Alternatively, if you're interested in real-time, live online puppy classes with some of the best puppy training instructors in the world, check out our sister site, SeriousPup.com. Our small, live, online classes will teach you all the essential skills you need to raise and train your puppy or adult dog, and the best part is you will have access to a real live instructor who will coach and guide you through any issues you might have and answer all of your dog training questions. It's easily one of the best ways to get the support you need to raise a puppy, all without leaving the comfort of your own home. If you're interested in either of these, we'll provide links to both in the description down below. Okay. With that out of the way, let's jump into the video. All right, welcome back. It's been a few weeks since we've worked with Daisy, a couple weeks actually, and uh, I'm excited to see where she's at now. Her owners have been working with her, so we'll start out with some just kind of basic obediency stuff. Let's see, what do you think? Will you follow me around? Yes, you will. I've got a food lure here. She seems interested. Yes, good girl, Daisy, sit. Oh yeah, okay, okay. How about over here? Oh. Mm -hmm. No, that's too high, let's see. There you go, good girl. Okay, come over here. I'm gonna leave a piece down there. Get it, come on. Oh, did you get it already? No, you did it. Look, look. Oh, I know what I'll do. Even better than just leaving on the floor, I'll say, in your crate. There you go. Daisy, come here. Yeah, there you go. What about Daisy in your crate? Ooh. Daisy in this crate? Oh. Daisy, back in there. Oh, I'll try a sneaky one this time. Here, over there. Daisy, in your crate. Daisy, here you go. Yeah. Good girl, yeah, okay, let's see. No food in my hand, will you follow me around? Come over here. Oh. You gotta go around. You gotta come over here. Over here. Good girl. Over here. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Daisy, come here. Come here. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, will you sit? Oh, yes. Okay. There we go. All right. Let's keep things fun. Let's have a little play session. About sit, yeah, down, down, down. Good girl, yeah, let's play, play, play. All right, I'm gonna play with her a little bit and then I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, sit down stand practice here on her training platform. So we're gonna reset the camera. We can get a little tighter angle for that while I play with her. Here we go. All right, Daisy. Oh yeah, I was gonna say onto your mat, but there you go. All right, down. Good girl. Retreat from that hand. There you go. Okay. Daisy, sit. Sit. There you go. 
Yeah, all right, let's get you warmed up with some food lures. Good girl, sit. Down. Sit. Yeah. Stand. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Down. Yeah. And stand. Stand. There you go. Good job. All right. So with some food lures, we get the sit down, sit, stand down, stand. Let's see if we can do it without food lures. Again, here, I'm just kind of trying to see where she's at because it's been a while since I worked with her. Let's see. All right. Fall in my hand. Sit. Good. Oh, sit. Good girl. Yes. Down. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Down. Good. Okay. Sit down. Sit. Good. Stand. Yes. Good job. So I've got an empty hand, but I'm luring down with my empty hand. Good. Stand it down. I like that. And let's see. Stand. Good. Way to go, girl. All right. So it seems like we can do some pretty good stuff with a hand lure with no food in it. Let's see. Let's see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. And. Mm-hmm. Good girl. Good girl, yeah. Okay, let's see if we can get any sort of uh, hand signals. Daisy, come here. Come here, come here. Good girl, yes. I like how quickly you came. That's definitely working on a little treat. I went to go check on our cameraman. All right, Daisy. Daisy, sit. Good. Oh, sit. Good. There you go. Daisy. Hold on to it for a second. Keep her in this down. All right. And stand. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Sit. Good. Down. Good. Stand. Oh, yeah. There we go. Sit. Sit. Mm, yeah. Well, I like that sit, stand. I like that down, but let's see if we can get a sit. Good. Down. Sit. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so as we can see, the hand signals aren't quite there yet, but we're learning them. Let's see if I can get her to do something cool, and then I'll whip out the tug toy for a little play session. Come here. Come here. Come here. Ooh. Do my legs. Yeah. Oh. Do my legs again. Yeah. Yeah. That's worth a tug. Tug, tug, tug. Yeah. So I'm really trying to not, you know, drill the obedient stuff too long based on the feedback I was getting. I'm trying to Mix in some play sessions. Ooh, yeah. 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 Ooh. Ooh. And thank you. Thank you. God, that was wonderful. Take it. Yeah. So I didn't even have to pry her little mouth open that time. I just waited a little bit and I think she's starting to get the hang of the thank you. She knows the fun won't happen again until she releases it. It's going to be a very boring toy when I say thank you. Like, thank you. Thank you. Good girl, yeah! So I want her to realize, oh, if I let go of the toy, it becomes fun again. So she gets rewarded for let go, letting go of the toy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And thank you. Ooh, that was so quick. That was so quick. Yes. And so I figure, you know, this kind of training is so much more fun. So, you know, going from the sit down stand stuff to this doesn't, you know, doesn't quite 
count as a prolonged training session. Thank you. Good girl. You know what? Here's a treat. There you go. And the tug comes back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh. And thank you. All right. Now let's see about a little bit of off and take it with food. Here we go. Here, Daisy, look. Got some food over here. Coming up. All right, Daisy. Off. Good girl, yeah. Okay, so she was already getting the hang of this before, this closed fist off. Daisy, off. Good dog one, good dog two, good dog three, good dog four. Oop. Off, good dog one, good dog two, good dog three, good dog four, good dog five, take it. Okay, good job, Daisy. What about this? Look, I'm not gonna, gonna hold it off. Off. Good dog one. I'll do a quick one because it's a new thing. Off. Good dog, take it. All right, let's try that again. Off. Off. Good dog, take it. Yeah. Okay, what about this one? Off. Off. Good dog. Off. Good dog. Off. Take it, there you go. All right, so we're gonna slowly start building up to where she can even do off, off an empty hand. All right, I think that's almost it. We'll do a little more playing and then we'll take a little break and we'll do some more later because Jamie's not gonna do too much training today, at least not in a row. We'll have lots of short training sessions today. Let's see, Daisy, you go in here. Where'd you go? Oh, in there. Good girl. Yeah, there you go. And in your crate. And ooh, yes. Good girl. Tug, 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 tug. Daisy. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna ask for. How'd you know? How'd you know I wanted to sit? Way to go. Good girl. Thank you. Sit. Yes, good job. Yes, good job. All right, Daisy, in you go, look. There's a little treat in there. Oh, we'll get another one, let's see. Do we have? Ooh, yeah, all sorts of some ones in there. All right, we can keep our training sessions short and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, so Daisy is very good at following me around the room and targeting my hand. She's very good at her sit, down, and stand position changes when I have a lure in my hand and even when I lure her with an empty hand. She doesn't quite have the hand signals figured out yet, so we'll keep working on those. She's getting better at releasing her tug toy when I say thank you, and she's really getting the hand of off using food to the point where I can even open my hand and show her the food a little. All right, let's hear what Kelly has to say. Hi, Kelly, good to see you. Hey there, hi, Jamie, good to see you. So we just watched a little video of uh, me working with Daisy. It had been um, it had been a couple weeks since I'd worked with her. We had a few things going on. And so in this video, I was just doing some basic obedience stuff, kind of see where she's at since it'd been a while since we worked together. So okay. what do you think? Um, it went well, it was pretty good. Um, I, I don't know how old she is in this video. I, I mean, how, maybe about 14 weeks, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, so she's getting old, getting grown up, getting older. Um, she looks great, and she stayed engaged with you very well. Um, actually, for what I'm still going to say is a very long time. 
but you did you did a good job of breaking up the play with the training with some play and the play with some training. So it's nice to blend that, not only to give her a break, but you know, the other reason that we do that is because it's um you want you you don't want training and play to seem mutually exclusive. Uh-huh. You know, you want to weave it all together so it's all one and the same to her, you know. Mm-hmm. And you do want play also to be a reward that you can use so that it, you don't always have to use food. your relationship mm-hmm. and, and play should be part of the reward um, tapestry that she expects, you know, and, and that is how you do eventually that will help you phase out off of food because mm-hmm. a lot of people are worried about relying too much on food um, and don't want to have to carry it around. And I understand that on the one hand, but also you know, like everybody, you know, you, people expect dogs to do something for nothing. And that's, that's silly, you know, no, no living organism does something for nothing. And I think what people also think is, well, it's not nothing. I'm feeding them. I take care of them. I'm the master, whatever they think, you know, well, that's not directly associated with their daily behavior, unless you're mm-hmm. paying. Everybody gets paid somehow for the things that they do. If you want to see more of something, you pay for it, you reward it, right? Mm-hmm. And so I don't think, you know, they should ever be, what are they gonna be off of food? Well, I mean, I still reward my dogs sometimes with food and definitely with play and relationship. And, you know, your, your, your conditioning training to be, you know, rewarding, right? You know, um, by, by paying with food and, by, and with play. So um, you're gonna to have to continue doing that. Otherwise they're not going to want to continue working for you. Does that make sense? So, but but anyway, the point is you do want to build the relationship. You do want to build play into the mix. You don't want it to be like, this is obedience mode. And I, you will do as I say, and then we'll, we play other times, you know, especially if they play with other dogs or little kids, you know, you don't want that to be such a contrast. Mm -hmm. So that is why we add play, um, into training. Want to keep you interesting, want to build your relationship and inherently also make her feel good about training because she gets to play and gets to, gets to have some good snacks. Yeah. So you're doing and, a good job of that. And I'm a big uh-huh. fan of play and fun as well. So yeah, definitely right. on board. I mean, why would you not want to, right? I mean, you know, it, it, training has to be reinforcing for them and, the, and, and relevant to them, you know, which is also why we add training into the mix of, I mean, play into the mix of obedience and, and training, right? Obedience, if you will, because, um, I want you to sit right now and there, you know, or, you know, when you greet people and, you know, if they could talk, they might say, why, you know, I don't want to sit when I greet people. I want to jump on them and lick their faces and be appeasing and friendly, or right. in other dogs cases, I want to be in the back. I don't want to say hi. You know, the, the, we have to give them a reason and to want to do what we want them to do because it is not necessarily natural for them to want to do the things that we need or right. want. Um, so that was all good. Um, I will say, yeah, I think, I still think, you know, 11 minutes is a bit long for a puppy, but you broke it up nicely and she stayed with you. So, so you are building relationship and you are reinforcing at a nice rate that is keeping her interested. So um, that's fine. It works. It worked. And again, she loves that tug toy, which is amazing. I love that she loves to play so much and that that just works so well with her. Um, Not always, a lot of puppies and for people that are are listening and watching, a lot of puppies don't inherently want to play as a reward when they're first learning at this young stage, especially. You know, you, a lot of you will be relying upon food more than toys. Some of that will develop as they get older. Some of that will develop if you practice and play with them. Um, you're, make sure that your play style matches your puppy's energy and, and their play style. You know, some puppies like tugs. Some puppies would rather chase a ball. Mm-hmm. Some would rather just you get on the floor and roll around mm-hmm. with them or that they can chase you or, you know, whatever it may be. So don't force it. It's got to actually be natural and, and you've got to kind of unlock your, the, the key to your own puppy's play style. Um, it's rare to get a puppy that young that loves to play enough I mean, they love to play, but they don't love to play. They can't, they don't, they can't necessarily usually focus on a, a, a task like tug so well, so early on. Mm-hmm. And so that and you've got kind of a gem there and more people might need to rely on food as they build the, the play um, repertoire and practice play. Mm-hmm. You do have to practice play and how fun, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's great. So, and I love how you're, when you do play, you're, you're, you're having her chase and catch, which is perfect. Um, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're modeling prey, 
right? Did you know how, are you doing that on purpose or is that just happening naturally? Or did you thoughtfully think about how to play tug with her? Um, I mean, I think I've picked up some pointers from, from you and Ian over the years. Um, but I think that I also, I would like to think that I'm, I'm naturally good at play. Uh, you know, I've got young children and I've always, like when I used to work as a, a river guide, they would always send me on the trips with kids because I was good with kids. Um, which I later learned was actually not such a sweet deal because I went on a trip at one point, had no kids, and I realized that there's a lot more time for sitting around drinking beer. And I was like, <laughs> hey, wait a second. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I know how to make things fun, you know, like a little bit of tease and a little bit of, you know, like making it hard to get, um, you know, like I did a little, uh, like coached a soccer team for, uh, for one of my kids you know, classes and, you know, figure out how to like get them excited to do the, the drills by making it into, yeah. you know, a game. So. Uh, uh, nice. Okay. Yeah, no, exactly. And so many people, when they try to play tug, they end up shoving the, the toy at the dog. You, just, you, you know, even if it's something you love, like pizza or burrito or ice cream, if someone's like, here, do you want some? And, you know, uh -huh. you might want it, but you don't want it shoved in it, you know? And so there's that, but then also, yeah, with dogs, it is, it's not even food it's more about prey and chasing and catching something and and you know and for the most part so they they need to have something to chase and if you're presenting it to them it's not going to have the same effect and your know, bunnies don't jump in puppies mouths and dogs mouths you know right prey doesn't jump into the mouth of the wolf you know it's i can i get it can i get it can i get it so yeah, no, but you been, can also I have, been, I have been thinking right explicitly about kind of like uh be the squirrel is the mantra i try and you know like you know, move fast and along the ground away from the dog. It seems like, you know, dogs love yeah. squirrels. So I can make the carcass be like a squirrel. Exactly. So that's perfect. You did a good job there. Um, I think I like your crate game, uh, the way you set up the two crates and have her going back and forth. I think that's really clever. Um, when one need not have two crates to do it, you can still, you can still definitely do crate games with one great if you don't have two but uh it, it's nice it's kind of a nice go-to 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 and platform kind of exercise which you can also do with the platform but with the crate you're obviously also adding value to the crate hopefully by doing that i would at this stage she's still young um i think you i would be a little faster about helping her or you know i, I think you went a little too far too fast you know like you want her targeting and going when you say in the crate or crate or you know have, you have to have a phrase and then a signal right so or word doesn't be a phrase crate point which is also a toss initially and then in um i feel like that was a little not as clear as it could be and maybe you went a little too far too fast mm -hmm. until you can from a foot away say great and she runs in before you even have time to point mm -hmm. you don't really move forward Right. Um, you know, if you want it for clarity's sake, if you really want, I mean, this is nitpicking, but it's straight. You know, if you mm -hmm. want it to work, you say the word, then you give the signal. And the idea is that little pause between the word and the signal, they start going, ah, yeah. And they're like, I know it's next. And that's how you get her to get into the crate before you throw something. You know, mm -hmm. it's got to be, so maybe more repetitions at a shorter distance that are a little easier. So mm -hmm. she's like, oh yeah, of course, I know what's next. You know, yeah. I go in the crate. And then, woo, and then you can jackpot her or seed it like you did. I like when you put some in there for her to find. That's yeah. fun too. You know, that's a really good idea. Um, and a nice transition or, or just surprise when you're, when you're doing it. You could throw one in and I've already seeded it with something better. You know, throw a piece of yeah. cable in and have fancy things in there. So, whoa, I went in my crate. It was amazing. Or pretend to throw and, you know, and, um, and have something in there. So, you really want her driving into that. You want her like almost holding her back. You can even like kind of hold her little chest very lightly, and, yeah. you know, and then talk something in the crate. And while she's like rear to go, say crate and then let go, Yeah. you know? And she's like, let me at it, let me at it. You know, which is a different version kind of of what we do with closing the crate with something valuable inside where, um, you know, it's kind of reverse psychology. It's opposition reflex, you know, it's like, yeah, let's, let's, let me get in there. And that builds a lot of excitement. And mm -hmm. if they can um, enjoy running to their crate mm -hmm. as a as a game, you know, they will absolutely run in when you need to put them in there too. And honestly, I still to this day reward my dogs for going in the crate. I would say eighty percent of the time, maybe more. Um, just why not? 
Like, yeah. why not? I want them to like it. They don't go in the crate very often anymore, which is also another reason to to um, reward it because you know it's a, you use it or lose it kind of situation. So, you know, I still give them special snacks sometimes in the crate. Um, if it's a messy snack, I want them in there or just because so they're used to it. So good good job on the crate game. I liked what you were doing there, but maybe make it a little easier and a little clearer. Um, and that's pretty much what I'll say about the rest of the training too. Um, you know, you, you're advancing to, to getting the lure out of your hand and that's great. You need to, you know, she does need to see that and practice you just pretending. And you actually did such a good job of holding nothing as if you had a lure that I wasn't sure for a minute there. I was like, does he still have it in his hand? He's not supposed to, you know, and you didn't, uh, but I fooled me. Later. So, <laughs> So that that's good. Um, it's a it's a tiny step forward. I mean, in a sense, because it looks very much like you're still luring to her. But you know, dogs are not stupid, and they have really powerful noses, so they know when there's something in your hand and when there's not. Even if you've been handling food, mm -hmm. like your hand smells like food, that's good and helps them. But they also know you don't have your hand. Even so, you know, so it's a nice little stepping stone mm -hmm. for them. Um, if it's probably, you know, so now it's time to think about what you're doing in training. I believe I was probably the one who said, you don't have to name things right away and keep training flowing and get all the body movements happening. And that's true. You wanna see these things are happening with relative reliability before you name them or make it the training too specific. I like to build in a lot of muscle memory and just habits like, yeah, go into your great. You know, it doesn't matter whether we're saying it or not. But if you are going to add words, and you, you did a pretty good job with this, but again, clarity is key, and we're trying to make sure that everybody out there is learning the right thing. Um, you, were, you, were, you kind of went, look at me, I'm playing with this clip. You kind of went in between um, the, the wishy-washy training and the clear, clear training. And I don't know if that's always clear to people and, or, or clear to Daisy, you know? So word, signal, action should definitely be, should be clear all the time. Um, I think you're getting a little close sometimes on the sit versus sit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, and it's very, it's humans. I do it too sometimes, but you know, I just wanted to put it out there um, that you want to separate that. If you're going to use the words, you know, use the sequence appropriately. Um, mm -hmm. Sit, pause half a beat, signal, reward. Um, <clears throat> And when you're doing it, you, you did that with the hand signals, when you, when you actually started to try to use hand signals versus fake luring. Um, I, would, I would separate those out, those three positions really clearly and, and just take a moment and, and slow everything down a little bit and try that with her. Um, so I would do a couple in a row where it's very clear that you have a lure and you do, and you have it, but and then you feed with the other hand. And then you take away the lure and fake her out and then reward, reward, reward if she does it right. And then, then do a hand signal and then feed. And I would do that all in one session, like rather than, and one, it, it, I would do that sequentially back to back mm -hmm. a couple of times, you know, mm -hmm. versus saying, okay, now I'm going to try this and, you know, and stick with one position at a time until you can get a clear hand signal. Okay. From each one. That's what I, I mean, I think it would just be clearer and easier. I mean, you didn't do anything wrong, but I feel like it was a little too blended for her, for a first step or for her level of training and her age. Does mm -hmm. that, did, did that make sense? Like, I'm going to do it with the lure. You're going to get rewarded sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it with a fake lure and I'm going to reward you every time. Now I'm going to use a hand signal because we've just done those other two things and you pretty much know what's coming. And right. I'm going to say it. And then it's going to be hand signal and then reward profusely. And when I think you already know this, but make sure that everybody remembers when you first are using no food in your lure hand, you must go back to rewarding every time for a little while. You want, you want, because when we, we, you know, when we're luring, we don't, we, we, you know, we get to the point where maybe we ask for five or six positions at a time before we re reward with the other hand. And that is great progress. Um, but when you first are trying to convince them that no food, seeing no food is still the promise of food. You got to put up with the promise of food, mm -hmm. you know? 
Um, and it, you know, and so they, for a little while, you're going to reward almost every time, if not every time, that they do something for a hand signal, and you're going to make sure that they have each hand signal independently, and every and each, you know, even verbal or not, that they can do everything on a hand signal that is clear and separate from the word and from the lure kind of you know uh, motions before you start putting that together and mm -hmm. before you start randomly reinforcing. So yeah. you're on your, you're on track. I, I, I feel like, like um, based on what you're saying, like it it would be good, right, to do um, a session of just going sit down, sit down, back and forth, and doing it right. As you say, first with a food lure, then with the no hand lure, and then the hand signals. And rather than mixing it up with you know sit down stand, which obviously we want to get there eventually, but this being kind of like a stepping stone, like let's get those hand yeah. signals for sit down where she can just like you know. She gets that. Yeah. Make sure she knows every piece of the puzzle before you start weaving it together or mm -hmm. chaining it all together. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just because she can do it with a lure and she's getting the muscle memory doesn't mean that she has any idea. Because the lure is distracting. It's useful, but it's also distracting, right? Mm -hmm. She's doing something without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Basically. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. So you want her to start thinking about it. And that's the challenge. And that's one of the reasons, you know, um, people can fail sometimes with you know, oh, reward training doesn't work, or it's not so great. I mean, well, if you've got to, you've got to do it right. It's like anything you're going to do, you have to do right, you know, or it's not going to mm -hmm. work. And so there's a sequence there that needs to be, you know, followed. It's very simple if you do it, um, you know, but you, you got to go through it. And sometimes there's a little uncomfortable moment where like you, you just did like three sits with the lure and then reward it from the other hand. And then you do one sit with a fake lure and you reward it. And then you go to the hand signal and there's like this, well, you know, and, you know, wait it out a minute, wait it out a minute, let them think, you know, and I go, wait, I know. Oh, yeah, this one. yeah. It, you know, um, it can be uncomfortable when you, for people, when you step up the criteria, but, you know, they've got to work through that. And, and maybe you step, so maybe some people, most people step up too far, too fast, or without the clarity. So that's part of the problem, but you do have to also go through those slightly uncomfortable moments of you know, fading the help and yeah. helping and, and yet finding out how to finesse and help them through it. So what I might do at that point is maybe if I wanted to help, if they were kind of stuck, give them a second, if they don't do it, I might change my body position. So I'm more upright or stand up. So they look up and, you know, yeah. if you can give them help, it's, it's, it's help. It's, I wouldn't say it's cheating, but it's help. You have to realize you're still prompting, yeah. but you know, maybe that that's the way to go. Um, as for the one other thing, I feel like well, same thing. Really, the same thing with the out, the letting go of the toy. I think you can. Um, you're going a little too fast on that. Um, there was a couple of times where she really did let go on her own, and um, you pause and you say, "Good." You're talking. I know you're talking to the camera too, but um, you. I would just say yes and mark that somehow and you know, good dog and then whip that toy back out immediately she gets it back mm -hmm. you know rather than like pausing oh what a good girl you did that and then, wait let me get let me take the toy away and put it in my pocket and then get a treat out you know make it faster for her so she is faster to drop because it's just a temporary you did really well like making the toy go dead so you say your thank you toy goes dead she's like hmm yeah, get it back, you know, really, really quick, you know, yeah. and then because she loves the toy so much and the letting go is hard for her, I think sometimes, a lot of the time, giving the toy right back is going to be the better reward and, and faster, or have the food right in your other hand, yes, you know, good dog, boom, feed, you know, and so the reward comes as soon as she spits it out, at least at first, so you get the really fast pop off the toy, you know, spit outs, you want her to, when you say thank you, you want her to bah, spit it out. So you could you could clean that up a little bit. But these are nitpicky things. You did a great job. Um, but you are doing this for public consumption and have um, opened yourself up to critique. So <laughs> so critique. I welcome it all. Yeah, I did a um, <laughs> so it, last last week as part of this series of videos, I did a whole session around valued objects. So we'll we'll actually I think that's going to be the video you and I will look at next. I don't oh, know cool. it'll what order it will be released to the public. But I'm very excited to hear. Uh, your feedback on that. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, that's what we have for now. I look forward to the next video. 
All right. Thank you very much, Kelly. I'll see you soon. Okay. So that was good. I've got some good ideas about things to try in the future. I really like the idea of holding Daisy back before I tell her to go to her crate. And I also like the idea of doing a session to really practice hand signals to see if we can solidify those some more. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video, week six, video two. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.